Hi, it's Penny here, and today I'm going to be unboxing the very last Brandon Sanderson Secret Project box. As well, I thought I would just do like a review of all the things that came in all the boxes. I have the books here. Behind me on the bed, I have all the stuff. But first, I really want to know what's in this one. So this one is just a Sanderson box. It just says a year of Sanderson. So I have no idea what we're expecting to get in this one, but let's see. As always, some paper. To be honest, I've used these boxes for so many things this year and this packaging for so many things. Although I still have plenty more as well, which is like, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I like things in boxes to be practical. And these boxes themselves, quite practical. Uh, so firstly, I'm saying we have socks. I don't know if I like the colour scheme, but if they're anything like the t-shirt we got at the start of the year, I would expect them to be very good quality. They say awesome at the bottom, which actually puts me in mind of um, Hank and John Green's Awesome Sock Club. Um, I don't think it's related. Um, but basically they're dragon steel socks and they just have dragon steel logos all over them and a little fancy bit at the top. Um, I'm going to put them on right now. Hmm. Uh, they do seem quite comfortable. I will say they're, they're quite uh, not too tight, but I do think some people might struggle with pulling them up which is always the problem with socks and them being one size fits all, which is never true. But anyway, what else do we have? We're not going to look at the spoiler card. Uh, we have, oh, like a little notebook. Is it just like a notebook for writing in? Let me open it. I don't actually know what this uh, image on the front is from. It kind of reminds me of some of the different detective ones he has, like the originals or the Stephen Leeds ones, is it? Um, or snapshot. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. what is this? Is this a surprise book? Like a little short story book? Brandon. Um, it says on the back, Sanderson Curiosities, and then it says it's Long Chills and Case Doe. A detective story by Brandon Sanderson. He says he wrote it in the early 2000s. It does have this picture in it. I guess it's kind of like a, a dark detective kind of story, but it has like some kind of um, sci-fi type element to it. I had not heard anything about this, but I am excited about it. Okay, what else have we got in the box? We do have the character pins. There's two. I was only expecting one. Um, I actually have the rest of my pins here. Uh, lined up in my favorite kind of allocation so I could fit these into the gap. Oh, there's a Brandon Sanderson pin. That's, that's kind of cool. He's pretty cute. It looks a lot like him. And then we also have Kelsia. So he looks pretty cute, although I think I never really imagined Kelsia to look like what he's described like in the book. So uh, that's a little bit problematic for me. But okay, I don't think those changed my favorite pins. Um, and then we've just got this one box to open up. What is it? Another book. Is this one just a notebook? I'm dropping things. Was that something important? I think it was just one of those packaging things, but it's gone. Gone forever. Okay, so this one is just a notebook with like uh, dots on one side and then lined paper on the other side. So you could do it as a uh, bullet journal. It does have some quotes along the way. Oh, it says in the front, welcome to my writing journal. You might notice it's not completely empty. The rest of the space is for you to do with as you please. I thought it would be fun to present this book with ideas I've had over the years. Every few pages we've added an actual note from my own writing notebook where I keep stories and ideas to be used for later. Mm -hmm. And it says something like, you might recognize a few of them. And then it's got kind of quite cool end pages with a bunch of the characters in them. And it's like a, a leather cover and it does have a ribbon for keeping track of where you are. And the front says, there are still stories to tell. So this could be cool. I would love to get back into writing. I never seem to have enough time. And I don't know, like... <laughs> This is just going to go with my other notebooks where I'm going to be scared to ever ruin them. But I need to get over that with notebooks. I think everybody feels like that about their notebooks, don't they? It's not just me. But okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, now I'm going to do like a quick summary of all the eight swag boxes. And we'll talk about which items I thought were the most practical and which items I thought were the coolest. Uh, and also maybe which ones are my favorite. 
because some I think are cool, but I personally didn't necessarily like them that much. Anyway, the first box, I wasn't able to find everything from it, although I was surprised how many of the things from these boxes have found their way around the house in use. But the first box was the Hoid box, so if you know me, you know I don't really like Hoid, uh, so it wasn't my favourite box. We did get this giant bookmark, which I probably will never use, um, because I mostly use these clip-on ribbony bookmarks. Um, but I like the idea of a big bookmark, I could see it being useful to some people, but also it has this Hoid design on it, which isn't my favourite. I, I like the planets, I don't like Hoid so much. Um, as well, we got this mouse pad, I have been using this, which is why it's all folded up at the bottom, and now I use it upside down, and I always uh, put my mouse on Hoid's face. So I just get the nice planet-y part of it. Uh, then also the t-shirt. So I actually like the quality of this t-shirt a lot and I wear it often because of that. I find it just really comfortable when I'm feeling a bit blah, I will put this on. But I do not like the design because I don't like Hoid. I also really like um, fandom t-shirts to be ones where like it still looks cool to people who have no idea what it's about and then just people who do know what it's about will have like that extra little bit of enjoyment with it. Whereas this, like Hoid for President, that's just going to confuse people, you know? Uh, also, I feel like this art makes him look like a Star Trek character. Is that just me? So I wear this a lot, but um, I wish we had got more t-shirts with better designs. I know they were, I think, going to put more t-shirts in, but then it was just way too difficult getting all the sizes right and dealing with that, and so then I think they decided not to have any more t-shirts, which personally I'm a little bit disappointed with because this was the perfect size for me. Uh, as well with this box we did get the Hoid stickers that they were like little gold stickers saying Hoid was here and the idea was to put them everywhere. thought it was really cool, but it did also say something in here like don't vandalize things, and that actually made it really hard for me to even decide where to put them and so as part of my packing up to move which we're doing at some point I put them in a box and now I don't know where they are. So uh, from this box I think the most practical thing is the t-shirt even though I don't like the design and to be honest well, the mouse pad is practical I use that all the time but to be honest I didn't think anything from that box was amazingly cool. Then we had the Ciderverse box uh, so we got like a little go fish pack of cards with Doomslug on it as well as this little uh, silicon mold with Doomslug. I did try to make jelly with this, it was a disaster, it didn't work. I think I need to try to make chocolate Doomslugs but I haven't had time to do that. Then as well we got a little Embot, I want to say figurine but that's for something that's alive, but Embot's alive, it's an Embot figurine right? Uh, just a model, Embot model. Um, I think this is really cool but again packed up for now. Uh, I will say my partner just came in when I was putting all of these out on the bed and he was like what's this you never showed me this um, and he thought it was cool even though he hasn't read the books. Uh, so I think this is one that probably is one of the coolest things we got in the boxes. I don't think anything in this box was particularly practical like I don't think the silicon mold is that practical but maybe some people would find it useful. Okay then we had the Mistborn box so actually the little Suni pup is one of my favorite things we got in the box mainly because I like him when he's this way and also it just fits with the, the actual book story really well like if you know the book it's cool but if you don't know the book like it's still a cool thing to have around. Um, we also got a bunch of stickers with this Mistborn box and I have put some on the back of my iPad. I put Vin there. Why have I forgotten this guy's name right now? Anyway he's my favorite obviously so I've put him there and I do have my Yumi sticker here too but mostly uh, the stickers are still in a little bag for me to find places to put them. And then lastly it's in its box all packed away but we got the Mistborn bookends. Mine are a little bit challenging to put together because a couple of the pieces really struggle to fit together but I have done it. Uh, but since I'm packing everything up to move I've packed them down for now. I am looking forward though to being able to actually have them on my bookshelves and I think because so many people that got these boxes are readers that these will be some of the most used items from these boxes. Like it's just very practical for readers to have a bunch of bookends. Okay then we had the Elantris box and I actually think this is one of the coolest and most practical. Uh, so firstly it came with the wax the, the wax seal and the ink seal. I'm still too scared to use these because I don't want to waste them which is stupid um, but again I'll probably use them once we move um, but this is probably the coolest most unique most linked to the story things in the boxes. We did also get these magnets with different aeons on them and I did discover I think after I opened them originally that they glow in the dark 
Uh, always good to have some magnets, so that's fairly practical. Oh no, I just lost one. I'll find that later. Uh, then, as well, we got these Elantris plasters. So again, plasters with Aeons on them. Um, I'm actually wearing one right now because I scratched my hand on the box that I had a lot of these in. Um, so very practical. And I do like to believe that they have some amount of healing power, maybe? And like, there's a lot in the box. These will last me a long time. So now I won't have to buy plasters. Okay, then we got the Cosmere bag. So this one, um, I think the coolest thing was these postcards, all with different cities from the Cosmere on them. And these I will definitely be getting up once we move into our new place. As well, we got a travel tag, which I think for people that travel would be really useful. Do I travel? Not really. And then we also got this toiletry bag, which I have been using to store uh, a lot of these things here, as well as a few other bookish and breakable things I have. So I'm just using it as a storage bag because I already have like another toiletry bag that suits me much better. But I think this is quite good as a storage bag. And I think this is, a, again, a pretty practical thing to get in a box because it's just like quite useful and like it's good quality it has a lot of different pouches and sections so it's quite flexible but i think out of this box it's the postcards that were the coolest okay then we have the warbreaker box uh, where we got nightblood which is definitely one of my most favorite things that we got i will be putting it for sure on my shelf once I get, once again once we move and once i have my shelves properly set up but like i think this was pretty cool and then the rest of this box was pretty practical oh we got these little packets of mints you can hear mine still have mints in them um these ones are minty taste i will take longer to eat these um these ones are fruity taste i do really like these but i have been like rationing them so i don't use them all up too fast but i have been enjoying them and like uh the tins are like probably reusable so you could buy more minty type things and refill them if you wanted and then as well we got four of these coasters and these have, are placed around the house in places where we drink in fact there's always one on my desk with my drink on it so these are pretty practical as well and then we have the stormlight box so uh the thing that i'm probably the least excited about is this little miniature guy i assume some people would be excited um i've just left him in the box and i don't really know what to do with him still but we did also with that box get this uh, bottle opener key ring again i don't really know what to do with this because i just think it's too big to have on my keys the way that i keep my keys but i think it could be cool for decoration purposes again once i set up my library properly uh same for these air fresheners that we got with it i do think these are all really cool designs so i will probably use them mainly for decorative purposes and then lastly we got this little bag which i actually used this morning as like a bag for when i'm running because i did say when i got this that i have this year bought like quite a nice bag for just generally going on walks and in everyday use but um sometimes that bag is a little bit big like when i'm going for runs and i just want to have like my wallet my phone my keys maybe a couple of other things and this is like an okay size for that so i used it this morning for my run and it worked pretty well and right now it's full of all my stuff so i actually think maybe this is the most practical of all the things in the boxes maybe although maybe it's this notebook that we just got because notebooks are always useful right even when you're too afraid to write in them mm. okay then before we talk about the books let's briefly talk about the pins i've still got mine in like the plastic again until i work out what i'm doing with them which will probably be after we move so they're probably all quite reflective when i try to show them to you um but these there were three that were mistborn era 2 i haven't read mistborn era 2 but i assume i will be more excited about these once i've read that there's also a hoid one which i kind of like but i don't really like hoid we have Raiden from elantris and kelsia from mistborn they're kind of cool but I don't know i think the pins don't exactly look like the characters look like in my head so i struggle with them a little bit i do think the brandon sanderson one is pretty cute and i also really like uh kaladin and shalom from stormlight archives i could see myself using those somewhere but my favorites are the vin one vin being from mistborn we also have vivena and vasha from warbreaker and i think what i like most about these is they've kind of got well vivena at least has like sparkly colors to represent the color based magic that's going on and Vasha has Nightblood who I love so that's why those are my favorite and I also just really like the one of Syl because she's Syl 
But as I said, I don't really know where I'm going to put those. I feel like maybe I should try to use some of them to decorate my bags that I use. But I don't really know what else to use them for. Let me know. What do you use your pins for? Anyway, now let's talk about books. Uh, firstly, I still wish the gradient had been done different and I think it's so close to being better than it is because if Yumi had just been more purple, which would have made sense with the story, like if it had been magenta, we could have had like a nice green, blue, purple, red gradient. So I'm not really sure why it wasn't more magenta because like colour schemes in Yumi is, it's all based around teal and magenta, right? So like why wasn't the book magenta? I think mainly because they wanted to put magenta on the cover and you wouldn't have been able to see it if the book was magenta, you know? But the gradient is ruined as a result. So I have already posted uh, previously reading vlogs for all of these, but to summarize, my least favorite was The Frugal Guide's Wizard. The Frugal Wizard's Handbook for Surviving Medieval England. There were elements I liked and I do like um, all the pen sketches inside the book but I don't particularly like the main art style of the art and I just didn't really like the story. It was okay in parts but not my favorite. Then my next least favorite would be The Sunlit Man. I still thought it was okay but it was just way too action based for me and I think just because it was so focused on the character. Oops I've been recording for too long and my camera just stopped. Uh, anyway I think the story was too focused on the character of Nomad and because of that like I would have liked more about the rest of the characters on this world that he was visiting. I do think it's interesting I've seen a lot of people who know the Cosme really well saying you shouldn't read this if you haven't read any other Cosme books and I would agree you probably need to have read most of the Cosme to get the most out of this. However I have had some people say to me that they have hardly read any Cosme and they really liked this so that's interesting. Um, this one as well, it does have black spread edges, which I think makes the book look really cool, but I'm just <laughs> so afraid of opening this book and looking at the pictures and ruining... Hmm, why are these pages stuck together? Why is that ruined? Did I ruin it? Anyway, I see I've ruined it already. Anyway, I do quite like the art in this one. I think it's cool. I just, I kind of wish it didn't have black spread edges because now I'm never going to want to read it because I feel like every time I open it the black sprayed edges get a little bit less good looking. Then we have Tress and Yumi. I really liked both of these and I struggled to pick a favorite but I think like in both of these the bit I liked the least was Hoid because of my feelings about Hoid. There was more Hoid in Tress so I probably would put this as my next in a ranking. Um, I thought Tress was a lot of fun. I think it was good to put this one first just because it is really beautiful. The art is not too bad. Not as good as Yumi though, but this book is like a pretty beautiful book and I, I do like some of the art a lot. And I also really like some of the story, like some of it was really cool and fun. Hoid, not my favorite, but it also had some interesting ideas about the Cosmere in there. And then Yumi. I think Yumi was my favorite, not just because it's a beautiful book and a beautiful story. Uh, the art in here is also just really beautiful. There were a few things that I wish had been done differently, like less hoid, but overall I think this was the best story. So I think this would be my ranking of the books. Still not the best gradient when I put it this way either though, is it? But maybe better? Hmm. I still have to think about what way I want to put them on my shelf. Oh, then as well, the last thing we have is the bookmarks. Uh, so they each have two sides. I think for the Sunlit Man, this is definitely my preferred side. This is a little bit boring. So this side, I mean, I kind of like both sides of the Yumi one and they go very well together. Uh, the Tress one is beautiful. It's kind of just the same picture and then zoomed in, but it's quite, quite lovely. Maybe it's my favorite. Uh, then as well, we have the, the Frigal Wizard one, which is obviously my least favorite. So I think for the bookmarks, actually, the, the Sunlit Man one is my favorite if you just look at this side. And the other side's okay, I guess. Then Tress, then the Yumi one, then this one. So that's all the stuff summarized from the year of Sanderson. Do I think it was worth it? Honestly, the New Zealand shipping was so much. But if it wasn't for that, I would say yes. Without that, it's just hard, hard to, to decide. Um, but I did have fun opening these up every month. I did have fun reading these books as they came out. I do now have a lot of stuff. Some of it is really cool, some of it is really practical. I was impressed by how much practical stuff there was in all these boxes. Oh, I'm just remembering the socks that are on my feet. Those are fairly practical too. 
Anyway, overall I think this was a really interesting experience to be a part of. I don't think many authors could put together a year's worth of swag boxes that would be the quality that these were, so yeah, I'm glad I was a part of it. But let me know if you got the boxes, if you didn't get the boxes, what do you think of all this stuff? Do you wish you'd gotten some of it? Or do you wish you hadn't got some of it? Like, just let's chat about the boxes and just the secret projects in general down in the comments. And if you'd like to see more of my bookish videos, uh, do subscribe. I will, at some point, I guess, uh, be vlogging my reading of this. Maybe soon. I have not put this in my reading plans, but I will need to. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are doing well, and I will see you next time. Bye.